Right, so what we're going to do, we're gonna, we're gonna, what we're going to do is put the three holes in now. So these are the pins that are going to hold the handle scales on. Right, so I'm looking at my knife there. There's my run out. So I'm thinking if I get the handle coming up to there, that's going to look quite nice. I hold in, the handle's there. There's enough handle there to give me get my thumb on the top. So it positions about right. Okay, so what we do now, from there, I'm going to come back about 20 mil. That's about there. Now I'm just going to sketch a line straight down the knife there at 20 mil back. From the back of the handle, I'm going to come in 20 mil, which is there. Line down. Okay. Now I'm going to put my ruler on here, and I'm going to say I want the midpoint. So that is 24 millimeters. So I'm going to come at 12. Now I know this is not highly accurate, so I'm using a big fat sharpie, but you can see where we want to be. Here, top to bottom is 30 mil, so I'll come in at 15 there. So that's where two holes are going to go. Now I'm going to put one in the middle. So I'll measure from end to end. That's 78. Half of that is 39. And at that point, my blade is 26 millimeters wide, so I'll come down 13. So now I can see where my three holes are going to go. And I'm going to go and stamp mark them there. So with yours, you do exactly the same. So now we go over and we're going to put centre marks in there so the drill knows where to start drilling. Okay. okay. drill on here, we're using the drill vise just so it gives us somewhere parallel to put the blade on, holding flat. So if we move into the hole, providing we're down normalising properly, the drill will go through quite comfortably. One. Two. That's three. Away you go. Now we're going to go and heat treat it. What we're going to do is just edge quench along here. So we can heat the whole blade up to the hardening temperature. And then we're going to dip it into oil. So it's in about half an inch and that edge will harden. This edge will cool more slowly. That'll be a, quite a fast cool normalized. So it'll be quite tough. It'll be quite hard. You probably wouldn't be able to drill it, but it will be very, very tough uh, as opposed to hard and brittle, like in the sharp edge. So you've got hard, brittle, sharp, very hard cutting edge and a much tougher backing edge. So if you're one of these heavy duty bushcrafters, you're not gonna do it any harm. Okay, let's go and heat treat. Okay, our quench tank's got some high speed quench oil in. And as you can see, there is a piece of bar across the bottom. That is set below the surface. We have a very high tech depth gauge here, which we can just check to make sure that's down about 20 millimeters. So we can now, when the blade is hot, it comes out of the furnace, we rest the edge on that bar. That's gonna make sure that 20 millimeters or so gets nice and hard, and the rest of it will just come, just cool a little bit more slowly. So we've got him at an angle, squeeze nice and hard at the back end. Bring him round, keeping him level, you put it onto the bar, and you keep the back of the handle just above the oil. That's just from experience, we know that if we keep the back of the handle just above the oil level, the whole blade is sitting at exactly the right angle to give us the right depth of hardening. Now, as you can see, the main body of the blade there, right in the center, is still red. We're gonna wait till there's absolutely no sign of red color there at all. Wait for about another 30 to 60 seconds. Then all I'm gonna do, I'm still squeezing hard here to stop it, from moving, I will then bring it back and drop it to the bottom. Now, if any of you ever watch Forged in Fire, that's about the right level of flame and smoke to properly harden the knife. Okay, that should do it. So I'll just bring it straight back, drop to the bottom of the tank. Now, if you ever look at your blade, it's just nice to come up to temperature there. Go, get him into the oil. Get it, squeeze hard, drop it onto the bar, that's it. Now, just keep the back end there, just above the line of the oil. That's perfect. If you drop it, you do have to go in there head first to get it. That's the rule in this blade. Okay, now just pull him straight back towards yourself, keeping it in the oil. As soon as it comes off that bar, to the bottom, down to the bottom. 
That's it. Now, if you relax, don't let go of it with the tongs, but just relax with the pressure and the whole lot will drop to the bottom and then you won't get so much cramp in your fingers trying to grip that thing so hard. <laughs> That's the thing I was over gripping anyway. Everybody does, I do still. Shit. It's murder. Until you get it, once you get it on the bottom there, it's nice and comfortable and you can relax a little bit. You can see quite clearly, hopefully you can pick it up on the camera there, but there is the quench line. So this part down here, this is what was in the oil and this is hardened up very, very hard. It's glassy hard, it's too hard in fact. And the same down here. This part at the back here, which was above the line of the oil, that will have cooled much slower. Uh, it won't be so hard, but it will be an awful lot tougher. In fact, the part that's been in the oil here now is actually too hard. If we were to sharpen that up to a razor edge, then and start using it, especially if you're a bushcrafter that might be a little more heavy duty with your knives, you're gonna chip out of the edge. It's, it's like, be like the, a shard of glass. So what we do now is temper it. Metallurgically and commercially, you never ever harden a piece of material. You always harden and temper. The tempering takes that brittleness out of it. It must be tempered after hardening, otherwise the stress levels within the material are just too high. So as we explained a bit earlier, we've just hardened the edge. And what Vince and I have done now is we've just taken the heat treatment scale off there. Been careful to keep our grind line to finish at the end here because that'll look quite nice. So we'll have a nice shiny blade, a nice bit of black uh, ricasso here, and then the handle scale is going to fit on there quite nicely. So I'm going to heat this up now to around somewhere in the range of 200 to 250 degrees. I'm going to use my torch. I'm going to put the flame on the spine here, which is nice and thick. If I put the flame on this thin edge, it will overheat too quickly. So the colors will start to show at the back, and then as they drift down, I will be able to control the temperature at the cutting edge, which is what matters. And then when it's about right, I'm gonna dunk it in the oil, not to quench it, but to stop any more heat from up the back here, running down to where I don't want it and overheating that front edge. So I'll turn it down to a fairly gentle flame. It takes a little while to get hot. Put a lot of a lot more heat up at the handle end here, because there's a lot more metal there. And the cold handle's sucking the heat out of the blade. And then we'll start moving down towards the tip of the blade as everything starts to warm up. There you see some colors. You might be able to see colors coming near the front there. Nice dark straw color. Pile of straw a bit further back. That'll do, in she goes. The oil off. You can see the colours on the blade, hopefully. Alright, now I'm going to do exactly the same again, Vince, and hopefully I'll get a slightly better colour pattern than that. Okay, now it goes in the oil as well. It just stays in there long enough to uh, take the excess heat out of the spine so that it can't sit and run down and overheat that uh, cutting edge. If you look carefully there, you can see some very pale straw colors. That's exactly what we're looking for. We don't see any of those colors till it gets to about 200 degrees really, not really in this kind of light. It's 200 degrees before you see anything. Uh, so really 200 to 220, 230 is ideal. So that's a pretty good color balance. That is the end of day one. We've got those uh, hardens. All we've got to do now on day two is we'll put the final finish on the blade, just to get a, up to about a 180 grit uh, polish. And then we'll put the handle on. So yep, yeah, that's the end of day one. Go and have a few beers and get ready for day two. Right, day two. If you want to know the technicalities of how to quench a knife properly, there it is. Because I've just been teaching it to Vince here. Okay? Now that is a very, very high-tech setup of how we heat treat our knife blades. 